There we go. Welcome everyone. Before we begin, let's just take a moment to settle in and just do a short exercise to bring ourselves into a state of calm and connection. And this exercise will take a couple of minutes. So just be comfortable in your chair and sit with your feet flat on the ground and your hands rested on your lap. I invite you to take a deep breath through your nose, filling in your lungs with air and exhale through your mouth. So take a breath and then exhale from your mouth. Again, inhale through your nose, and as you exhale, release any tension or any stress you may be carrying. Out. As you continue to breathe rhythmically, I want you to just gently roll your shoulders backward in a circular motion. Just roll your shoulders backwards. And any tension or any stress that you may be holding, just let it go. And let's do this for about 10 more seconds. Now reverse it, move them forward, circular, and feeling relaxation through your shoulders and neck. And next, place your hand on your heart, chest area, middle of your heart, middle of your chest. And take a moment to connect to your own heartbeat. And feel the gentle rise and fall of your chest as you breathe. As you sit in this posture, take a few deep breaths through your nose and exhale through your mouth slowly, allowing any remaining tension to melt away. A couple of times. Great. Now gently begin to open your eyes and focus onto the screen. We have taken a moment to do this grounding exercise, preparing ourselves for the session. I encourage you to carry this calm and openness with you to our, to our session on exploring progress. Now, what we have actually been doing is we have, we have run these two series sessions, okay? We, what we did a week ago is explored the art of setting meaningful goals. And then I ask you to do a daily exercise for about a week. If you have come back from that one week ago session and you are here with a daily exercise, we will use that. If you have not come in, we'll still do something today just to reinforce. And today the idea was to focus on finding out challenges that you always face when you're going through any kind of personal change. So how to overcome them. But the most important thing is to nurture also your progress, okay? So those are the two things we are going to do. Okay. So 
the session, how it'll go is we will focus a bit onto the onto the uh, the topic itself, but we will get into exploring inner resistance. So how does this work? How can you? What are the different kind of inner resistance you would have followed, you would have seen in the session or in the week that you passed? And uh, we'll, I'll just make you go and look at it. And then we will find out what are the strategies that are there to overcome. And then together with what we did last week, I will actually show you a full roadmap of how to do personal change, something that I have used through all, all my this journey of last 10, 12 years. And uh, what I will do is the second part of the roadmap, which we'll talk today, and we will prepare it, and then we'll use IFS to build the inner resilience. Okay, because today, the idea is how do you build, how do you overcome the challenges that you face when making changes, and how do you use uh, a bit of IFS to build inner resilience. That's what we are going to do today. And then we'll come back to our usual Q&A. So let's get into the the exploring session. So, you know, in the journey of personal change, it's essential to recognize and understand that inner challenges or inner resistance will always arise, okay? And what we'll do is go into uh, self-reflection exercise so that you become aware that uh, what are your challenges and then what can you do about that and we'll get into that but first let's get into the identification of your own challenges so let's start by some of the classical ones that happens okay uh, there is a self-doubt, which is when we doubt our ability to even achieve anything. Okay, so when you write your goal, the first thing is saying, well, I don't know if this goal is really something that will happen to me. Okay, there's a fear of failure. It's a worry that we won't meet our own expectations or sometimes others' expectations. Depends what you put into the goal. Whose expectation are you putting there? There's always the story of procrastination. Let's do it today. So... I would be very interested to know how many of you could do the exercise all seven days if you came last week. Uh, and if you didn't do one or two days, it's okay, don't worry. Uh, there is no penalty for that, but it tells you a little bit about procrastination, which is let's delay it on another day because there's anxiety or uncertainty. Uh, there's a lot of self-criticism, negative self-talk that can hinder our progress and one of the exercises we are going to do today is to actually uh, come in front of this negative salt talk which uh, basically puts you out and then there's a lack of motivation sometimes there is a there's always an issue to find the inner drive and then the mother of all is resistance to change which is uh, some of us have stayed in that zone for so long that we actually, even if it's in many cases is living hell, but it's a comfort zone. I'm familiar with this. I know how it feels to be here, even if it's horrible. And if I change something, I will get out of a familiar state. And that makes you resistant to change. Okay. So all of these one will come in. Now, what I want you to do is to think about yourselves. So if you came last week, good. If you did not come, it's okay. You know your story, okay? Uh, so I want you to take a moment silently and consider which of these inner challenges resonate with you personally. So take a moment to become self-aware. And I want you to n not to judge yourself. I promise you, all of these things have been there. I have gone through this, and everybody I see goes through all, most of them. So it's, you are not unique, or you are not, uh, uh, how do you call, doomed, if you have one or more of these 
resistance is. So just take a moment and write down. Okay, take two minutes and write down what are your challenges and how do you feel about them. And if you have done the exercise last week, you would have seen fears. Remember, there was always a story of fear. So those fears are part of your challenges. Okay, so th the idea we did this is we are going to go further ahead in the session today is that it helps you to, by recognizing these challenges, actually you lay a foundation of overcoming them because you're acknowledging to yourself, to your system. And that's why in the exercise we make you do the fears because it's good to acknowledge so that then you can do something about it and we are going to explore some of this stuff today. Okay, so what are the strategies uh, that could be there to overcome? So one of them is self-compassion. Now, it's a very valuable uh, approach in overcoming self-criticism and self-doubt. And self-compassion involves treating yourself with kindness just as you would do to somebody which is a loved one, okay? So which means, for example, when you make a mistake, uh, instead of being critical, you would offer yourself comforting, reassuring words. And in our, in our session, especially when we do IFS, one of the key elements that you will hear me saying is being compassionate to yourself. Because from compassion, you can get to hear something more than what you will hear when you're critical to yourself. Classically, this is how it happens, okay? Now, the second one is goal chunking. Uh, so you can sometimes look at your goals itself. Uh, one of the techniques is to break larger goals into smaller manageable ones, okay? For example, if you have something called, let's say, I want to get fit, you can then break it into two or three specific goals so that they become more achievable and they help you to generate momentum. That's a technique to do. Uh, it depends what you put into your goal okay, or into your objective, uh, but you could also do that. And so when you're going back and doing your goal writing exercise, you can think about sometime breaking them into smaller chunks so that then because today in in our session i'm going to ask you to do something else on top of what we did last time and so it will become useful there okay and and uh, so it helps to create momentum that's what it does okay visualization you know this about that this is a very powerful technique we use it i use it a lot i remember last time somebody asked about that as well okay so it, so from a neurological point of view, when you do visualization, it allows you to build an image of yourself in that future space. And then you use it as a way to critic yourself. So come to know about your fears and then you overcome your fears. And so it kind of does two things because in any case, inherently we'd all do it, okay? And yes, you can you can create vis visualization of everything. Now, some of us are not very visuals. 
For example, I'm not, I'm what we call auditory digital. So what I actually do is I create a audio equivalent to my visual uh, uh, future. So I actually, I say out the word and I don't see its exact image, but I can sense it with a kind of, uh, so you can make a sentence and you, you say it, that this is what I am, I'm sitting there, I'm having that, or I'm doing this, I'm here. And so it becomes similar, exactly same, okay? So if somebody is not very visual, some people are not, you can use that technique as well. But if you can use any sensory uh, visual boosting technique, do, go ahead to do it. Imagery is a good one. We talked about it last time as well. Okay. Uh, the other one is accountability. So one of the things you can do, which is works very well, is called goal buddies. Uh, so you can have a person whom you trust and who can be a friend, uh, could be anybody that you can trust or believe in. Okay. And you can say, well, uh, you know, can you have me supporting? So the the purpose of this is not to be uh, following you. It's not another mother or father if you are running away from that. Okay, but it's somebody who is there to help you remind from a place of kindness, from a place of love. Okay, remember you were supposed to do this. This is what you told me. How are you doing on that? Not it doesn't become your uh, your coach or guide or etc. is just a friend who has that ability to just kindly remind you. It works brilliantly well. There are in, in, in many, many different places people do that. So see if you can find somebody. Again, remember, uh, it's not somebody which creates stress on your system, but it's lovingly bringing to you awareness that, you know, you're the goal. Can you do that? Did you do it? Okay. Uh, can you do something about it so that uh, you can go towards it, etc., etc.? And I'm going to give you all the tools to be able to go around it, of course. Okay. And the last, but the, probably the most important, is face your inner fears. And we are going to do today. So I'm going to work with three in the session. I want to work with three of your inner fears. Uh, and uh, these, uh, and if you're more, you can reuse the session. To run more okay so there is no limit about uh, the number of fears you can have around your goals so so if you use all of that okay which means self-compassion goal chunking which means breaking up or putting together goals so that they become manageable visualization having some system to bring accountability to you in a loving kind way and then facing and managing your fears, uh, this will actually empower you to self-navigate, self-doubt, procrastination, resistance, and then go towards your goals, okay? So so that's the story. And uh, so we talked, so last, uh, uh, so last time I gave you three, actually four steps, and today we are going to do uh, one more additional. I will do actually two additional things. So so how does the goal story work? You start by knowing what you want. You start by understanding why you want it. So what is your motivation towards it? Then you start with what I call imagine it happen. This is visualization, okay? Then understand your fears. Then overcome your fears, which is what you're going to do. And then build resilience in your process which means you can do it again and again and again, and then it becomes like a machinery running. Don't worry if you don't know IFS, uh, it, it's not relevant today. Just follow the process today, okay? Okay, so this is what we did. So if you're not, if you're coming first time here, this is what we did with everybody, okay, last time, okay? So write down what you want and write it in a present moment. Okay, as if it's already done. Okay. And you start by fantasizing about it, not concerned about how you are going to get there. So the key thing in this process 
is you write what you want without taking any consideration, any concern about how it will be done, where will be the money coming from, will I have the resources, will I have the time, et cetera, et cetera. All the things that make you not even uh, put anything into your goal, okay? So don't get into how, go into what, okay? And you did it last time, right? And then I asked you to do it for five days, okay? The second thing you're going to do is why do I want it, okay? The why explains your personal motivation because your brain needs to understand why do you want it, okay? And this is where you put your why. And it's important to put a why in front of every goal, every objective that you put there, okay? So you say, well, I want this because I want to have financial freedom. I want to be in my professional top place or whatever. There is always going to be a story of the why, okay? Once you have done the why, then you get into what can hold me back? My fear. I'm afraid this will hold me back. I'm afraid I worry that I will not be doing this or I will fail or any other fear of performance, anything. A lot of things comes in front of fears, okay? But you write them down, you acknowledge them, okay? So this was the exercise that you were to do till now, okay? What, why, and fear, okay? So what we are going to do now is we are going to connect to your fear. So what I want you to do is to go back and look at your list that you have done, okay? If you have done the exercise before, and if you are here today, first time, don't worry, just write what do you want, why do I want it, and what am I afraid of, or what, will, what can hold me back? And write two or three of them if you can. And if you have been here before, just look at your fears and see them, read them. So this is what we are going to do. So I'm going to repeat it for three fears. Okay. And you just follow with me. Okay. So if you have read your fears, you can always have your pen and pencil in front of you if you want to, because you may want to write down. Okay. Yeah. So just be comfortable. Ensure that your body is in a comfortable position. Your arms are resting. And you can close your eyes. And begin by taking several deep breaths. Or take in through your nose. Fill your lungs and then exhale through your mouth. Just continue to do few times. You're grounding your mind and your body into present moment so that we can create a stable anchor for this session. Now think about the first fear that came up in the exercise. Just think about it. As you think about that fear, notice where in your body you have a sensation 
It can be in your body or around your body. Just notice where you have. And recognize your feeling or any emotion that is associated with it. Just recognize the sensation in your body, around your body, where it is and any associated emotion or feeling without any judgment. Continue to breathe into that area of your body where you feel the sensation. And see if you can become curious as to what information is held in this area in your body. So just be curious. And you can also become compassionate if you want to. But be curious at least. And extend an invitation to this area in your body where you felt the fear. And let it know that it doesn't have to overwhelm you. And you acknowledge its presence and a role in your life. And you stay curious and compassionate towards it. Continue to breathe and stay connected to this sensation. And allow space for it to communicate with you, reassuring that you are here to understand and support. Now ask a question to the sensation saying, what is your intention for me? And notice what you hear. Again, stay curious, stay compassionate, and hear what you hear when you ask, saying, what is your intention for me? See if you understood the intention. Remember to stay curious and compassionate. And if it did make sense to you, what you heard as an intention of the fear, then just acknowledge it and say, I understand you. If there are conflicting voices that you hear, you can just ask them to just go into a waiting room and tell them we are going to engage with them later.
ask another question saying, well, what is if, what are you afraid would happen to me? So you're asking to the sensation saying, what are you afraid will happen to me? And see what you hear. And then ask again, what is your ultimate fear for me? Let's see what you hear. See if you can acknowledge that, if you understand the fear, and acknowledge with compassion. Now finally asks, what needs to happen for this fear to be completely relaxed and be less present? So what needs to happen for this fear to be completely relaxed and be less present? And notice what you hear. See if it makes sense and acknowledge. And if you want, you can always open your eyes and write down what you heard as an action. Because when it's said, what needs to happen for the fear to relax, there's something it asks you to do. And if you want, you can always open your eyes and just take note of it. And while taking, you're taking note of it, just acknowledge and give your gratitude or forward your gratitude towards this fear. Letting me vocal, letting you know what it is protecting you from and what you can do about it. If you're not getting any answer, just notice how you're feeling towards the fear. And if you are not feeling curious or compassionate, just become compassionate and curious towards it. Because remember, the fear will speak to you 
only if it feels that you are curious or compassionate towards it. And if you are already fearful of it, it will not make you more fearful. Just remember that. So you can breathe into that area. Take a moment. Breathe into that sensation. And then ask again. Only if you are at a place of curiosity and compassion. Because remember, your fears are here to keep you safe. Sometimes mere acknowledging them makes them calm down, but sometimes they give you some cues about what actions you can do. So see if you can go to your fear number two. And just thank fear number one, saying thank you so much for coming in. I will be in contact with you. But let's tune into fear number two. Bring it into your awareness. Tune into it. Notice when you focus on your second fear, where do you feel it in your body, around your body? Or you may see some images as well. Just notice what sensation you feel. And just direct your breath towards that sensation. It can be in your body, it can be around your body, or it can be an image. And just notice your feeling towards this sensation. And if there is fear, if there is concern, any kind of stress, see if you can go towards curiosity and compassion. The physical sensation that you feel is where the fear is stored. So just notice your feeling towards it. And if it's not yet compassion or curiosity, just breathe into that area. And take a moment. Send your breath into that physical area. And stay with it for a moment. As you connect to it with curiosity or compassion, you allow space for it to communicate with you. And you can say, I'm here just to understand and support.
And if you could go to that place of compassion and curiosity, ask the same, ask a question saying, what is your intention for me? And notice what you hear. see if you understand the intention and if you do just acknowledge say I got it and I'm grateful that you tell me and notice how it shifts as you acknowledge And if you hear any conflicting voice or something what starts to come in, you can always kindly ask them to go to a waiting room and that you will engage later on. Ask another question. Ask, what are you afraid would happen to me? So what is his fears? for you. What is it protecting you from? And you can ask again, saying, what is your ultimate fear for me? What are you really, really afraid for me? And notice what you hear. Remember to stay curious and compassionate. See if you understand and it and if you can acknowledge it. And stay curious and compassionate. Compassionate more. They thank you for letting me know. Now ask it, what do you need from me, which is from you, to feel secure and valued? See what you get as an answer.
and see if you can acknowledge what you heard. And remember to stay in a place of compassion, feeling grateful for it, to letting you know what it needs from you. And say, well, I will take note. And if you want, you can open your eyes and write it down. And as you write, just feel compassionate and grateful for this part of you to tell you something which is of value. And notice how it shifts. Take a couple of breaths into your heart. Feel your feet. Feel top of your head. And feel from the top of your head up to your feet. Just can. And now see if you can connect to the third fear that would have come up. And invite it in. Bring it into your awareness. Now that you have done it two times, see if you can stay curious and compassionate while you connect to it. And notice any sensation in or around your body or any visual imagery that you see. Just notice it, acknowledge it, and stay curious about it. And if you want, you can breathe into that area, into your body or into the image. And stay in a place of compassion for yourself and for this part of you that's showing up as you connect to your fear. Now from this place, you can ask to this physical sensation, saying, what is your intention for me? Stay curious, stay compassionate. Continue to breathe into that area as you hear its intention for you. Does it make sense what you hear? If it does, see if you can acknowledge that you understand. And if there is a conflicting voice you hear, you can always ask it to go into a waiting room and that you will engage later on. Breathe into that area. Stay compassionate towards it. And ask it, what are you afraid would happen to me? What is your real ultimate fear for me?
and see if you can acknowledge however challenging the fear may be. Acknowledge it from a place of compassion. And as you acknowledge it, notice how it shifts. And then ask a question. What needs to happen for it to relax and be less present? Take a moment if you want to take note of that, acknowledging it. And now take a moment to acknowledge the courage and resilience all the fears have shown. And express your gratitude for the revels in your life. Let them know that you have taken note of the action they ask you to do and you are going to revise it every day. Now take a moment to share with your system your vision of life, what you want for you. And let your system know how grateful you are for it to be present here with you. And let them know that you will continue to work on a daily basis, acknowledging the wisdom that it brings along, actions that it asks you to do. So just acknowledge. As we begin to close this, recognize that you have taken significant step in understanding your fears, cultivating a space of safety, understanding and confidence within yourself as you connect to fears and the actions that they've asked you to bring. So just take a couple of deep breaths.
So let me remind you of the practice that I would ask you to do for the next 30 days, if you want, want to master change. So what you do is take the meditation that you received on the WhatsApp telegram, run it and write your goals, what, okay? And write it in the present moment. And it's perfectly fine to keep changing and evolving and chunking them down, chunking them up, etc. And then write down the fears that come up and do this exercise that we did today about fears. You can do it three fears at a time. So you just run this part. And then at the end of it, you write down three actions that you can take today. And do not judge yourself if tomorrow you're not done one of the three actions. It's okay. But just write down what are the three actions you will do today. That's it. Three actions. Okay. And you keep doing this for 30 days every day. You write your goals, you write your fears, and you do the fear exercise and you just keep repeating. Okay. Now what will happen is some of the fears will start to disappear. They will convert into actions. They will convert into things they do. And as they start to do that, you will start to move through your actions and move through your goals and something will start to change, which will make you move towards what you write as your goal. Okay, just do this for 30 days. I will bring lasting changes for you. Okay, so let's then start to close, okay? And I just want you to just close your eyes. And visualize yourself as, a, as that re resilient caterpillar inching its way through life challenges, knowing that obstacles is a step in, stepping stone towards you becoming the beautiful butterfly that you're meant to be. Feel the compassion and warmth for yourself on this journey. Recognize that we all face our unique inner challenges is part of our human experience. And I want to invite you to set an intention for nurturing yourself, your progress, and facing your challenge with resilience and self-compassion. going to go into Q&A. During this time, you can express your personal journey. Remember that we all hold each other in compassion and support without becoming overwhelmed by each other's stories. We're just all individuals committed to our growth and transformation. So just take a deep breath in, filling yourself with renewed energy and determination. And when you're ready, gently come back, open your eyes and be present here. Thank you for your presence today and for your continued journey.